Good morning to everyone uh, and welcome to this week's episode of our faculty spotlight here at Virginia Union University. I'm Terrell Strayhorn, Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs, and I'm delighted to have so many join us today for this wonderful episode. This faculty spotlight series is an opportunity for the university to feature our faculty experts um, and instructors in their discipline in their area of subject matter um, expertise and to talk with them about their passions, about their commitments to research and teaching, as well as some of the future trends in their field. This morning, we are delighted to have in our faculty spotlight, Dr. Gerard McShepard. Dr. McShepard earned his PhD in biology with a cognate in neuroscience from uh, Tennessee State University, one of our nation's historically black colleges. He also earned a Master of Science in Molecular Biology from Tennessee State University. He received his BS in biology uh, from Fisk University. And after spending time at Fisk, he became a member of Alpha Chi Alpha chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity and has served in a number of other positions. It's an exciting uh, opportunity to talk with Dr. McShepard who serves on the faculty in the School of Arts and Sciences as a professor of biology, also as one who has worked at other institutions and carried with him both administrative and teaching experiences. He's a scientist, a scholar, a teacher, and a campus leader. Without further ado, I want to welcome uh, Dr. McShepard. Good morning, Dr. McShepard. Good morning, Dr. Strayhorn. Glad to have you with us. And so I want to go um, into a couple of questions and give you an opportunity to respond and share. Um, for those who are joining us this morning on our recorded episode, as well as those who might watch the episode, the recorded episode later. First, tell us a little bit about yourself, including your academic training and your field of expertise. All right. So I was born in Nashville, Tennessee, just to give you a little um, synopsis of wh where I'm from. Um, and as you can uh, see from my bio, I, I attended Fisk University for my bachelor's degree in biology. And before that time, my uh, parents did instill in me uh, a, a scientific background. My father, who uh, taught in the uh, Nashville public school system for a number of years, uh, during the time that he was a um, teacher, he would always have uh, these different experiments, either around the kitchen table and, and uh, test the experiments before he tested the experiments with his students. So. Um, Every summer, um, as a result of that, also we would, my brother, my sister and I, my brother Gerald, my sister Angela, and I would go to DeKalb, Mississippi to uh, visit our grandmother for the summer. Uh, and uh, DeKalb, Mississippi is a little small town. Uh, it had one stoplight uh, at that time. And then uh, I think it has about four or five now. But every summer, on that 90 acre farm, I would always be going around uh, with the animals and, and, and just being exposed to so, so many different things that city kids probably were not exposed to uh, as well. And my grandmother actually was a teacher in the DeKalb uh, school system in Mississippi for a number of years. In fact, I think she taught for at least 70 years um, she passed away at age 102, and by the time she had finished her career as a teacher, uh, she had taught grandchildren, I believe great-grandchildren, so uh, the, the teaching uh, component is uh, instilled in the Max Shepard DNA, you could say. Um, at Fisk University, that's where I majored in biology, and then went on to the, the other TSU, uh, Tennessee State University, to work on the master's degree as well as the uh, doctorate. And during that time, I worked with a with two gentlemen, uh, Dr. Robert F. Newkirk and, uh, at Tennessee State University, as well as Dr. James Townsell, who uh, recently passed away, uh, who was at Meharry. Uh, and so both of those schools, I, I did a lot of research there. During that time, uh, working on that research, I was working on uh, with Dr. Newkirk and Dr. Townsell, transporter function. So the mechanisms that regulate sodium dependent high affinity choline transport. 
and also to demonstrate the involvement of GTP aces, uh, i.e. Uh, Dynamon, in the retrieval of the choline co-transporter from the plasma membrane. Um, looking at biochemical as well as molecular functioning and neurophysiology. Uh, recently, um, when I joined uh, uh, Virginia Union, I met a guy named uh, Richard Campbell in regards to geological agriculture. This is a new technique here. Uh, according to his book, Riverstones Grow Plants, by the author and inventor, uh, Richard Campbell, uh, the full definition of this concept of geological agriculture, which he has a patent in, is the study and the application of cultivating vegetation to maturity, uh, indoors and outdoors, permanently uh, in geological formations, i.e. rocks, uh, without the use of soil and fertilizers. And uh, Dr. Ritter uh, was the uh, recipient of one of my uh, grow cups that I provided in his office. Uh, who, and Dr. Ritter is the Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. And he uh, observed and watched uh, those plants grow uh, in his office. So he, he can be a testimony in regards to geological agriculture and, and how, how it works. And so that's just a brief synopsis of uh, my research that I have. That's great. Well, appreciate that rich uh, history and also all the information that you've shared about um, your background. So as a professor of biology, and I love your story about your grandmother, I too come from a, a long line of um, you know professionals committed to the helping field, whether it's education or nursing. And certainly my grandmother was a teacher and that sort of uh, put that spirit of teaching and development in me. So tell us a little bit about your experience also filling um, administrative roles. Um, over your career, you've worked in programs like STEM programs, both at Fisk as well as here at Virginia Union. You serve currently as our president of the uh, Faculty Senate. So talk to us about your career and experience in um, administration as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I started out in the uh, Office of Institutional Research. This position was an appointment by Dr. Uh, Perkins, the president at that time, who, who told me that this was a position that um, a lot of people probably don't want to work in, but uh, it's a very important component uh, with any institution. So that data collection, information, you know, all, all those things are extremely important for any institution uh, to assist organizations in being able to use that data and information to make informed decisions. Um, technical tasks, when we talk about collecting, analyzing, and interpreting and reporting data and information to um, the president or any vice president. So these were different tasks that uh, were performed in that area of institutional research. One of my functions uh, when I was appointed in, I think it was 2012, uh, one of my functions was to move VU from the traditional paper-based uh, student evaluations of instruction to an online version. At that time, we had the bubble sheets and the pencils and the number two pencils, and you go around and hand them out to students, and you would leave the room and then hope and pray that the students would put them back in the envelope, and then somebody else, a student, would take them over to Office of Institutes of Research and drop them off. Um, so I, I was the person who launched along with Dr. Uh, Patty Young to do a pilot study. And this was a small group. And then during the summer, I did another group. And we finally made that decision to move uh, from the standard paper base to a standard uh, online based uh, student evaluation of, ins of instruction. That moved to also alumni surveys, graduating senior surveys to go online, as well as other different surveys to go online as well. And so this made it easy for faculty, uh, department chairs, and deans to, to access that information uh, readily and easily, normally when applying for an award, a uh, promotion, or even tenure. And so that made that process seamless there. In regards to planning and, and evaluation, I work with a lot of department chairs as well as deans in regards to uh, program review, uh, particularly for accreditation uh, purposes, uh, formation, of those uh, different reports there and compiling those together. 
and you know, looking at compliance as well uh, in regards to every area. You know, this is something that happens with any institution. Just uh, make sure we have our guard up in regards to that. And we're all human beings and still um, stumble in life. So, you know, we, we just keep moving forward with that. Um, information uh, users and consumers in regards to information, we would have requests on data uh, from different particular areas, uh, I guess GPAs, uh, major, et cetera. And um, a lot of things when we talk about these discussions related to uh, data collection with uh, another, uh, this is the formation of uh, a good decision-making process. So the support was there and, and still is too. That's great. Um, so I wanna talk now a little bit more about um, some of the other aspects of your work. And so, I mean, you're a biologist, um, you've worked in STEM, I know you have several projects. We'll come to that in a moment, but could you talk with us about your the research that you've published um, in fields like molecular science and invertebrate zoology? Um, so talk to us about the, the real questions that animate your research. What's What are you sort of pursuing in your research and scholarship? And then highlight a couple of those uh, pu publications okay. and manuscripts for us. Okay. I seem to be everywhere these days in, in regards to uh, research from uh, geological agriculture to invertebrate zoology. There's a, a book recently uh, published is something that started because it was a course that I, I wouldn't say um, no one wanted to teach, but uh, it wasn't really a course that someone was gravitating to teach, i say that. And so I ended up teaching this course called invertebrate zoology. And as a result of that, I, I, I kind of figured that, you know, there would be a whole lot of textbooks about that. And uh, unfortunately, there aren't a whole lot of textbooks about it. So I decided to uh, create my own textbook for the course. And I just happen to have it right here. So here it is right here. And um, I just decided to do that. And so th there are a lot of things in regards to uh, invertebrate zoology that a lot of people don't know. In fact, uh, in that course, uh, for one trivia fact that I say is that 23% of all marine or organisms are mollusks. And um, there are likely millions, and this is something that makes people stand up in their seat. Uh, there are likely millions of invertebrates in your home right now, millions of them. So, and uh, for geological agriculture, that's something that I've been working on and we're working on a, uh, an, a unsolicited grant um, in regards to that. So hopefully we'll get that grant out uh, this uh, semester. That's just a brief synopsis of that. So I'm, I'm all over the place though, cause I've, I've done research with uh, <laughs> the Richmond Ambulance Authority as well. In fact, it's one of those posters that's sitting out there in regards to heart disease also. So I'm all over the place. So. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> and you've uh, written your own textbook and you've had it, you had it on display here in the episode. Um, right. <laughs> but you also have plans of writing another book. This is a book where you're going to focus on African Americans in STEM fields. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yes, sir. Um, so when I was at Fisk, I taught a lot of different courses. And then when I made it here to uh, VUU, there's a course that I teach that was uh, started by uh, Mr. James Wright, who was a VUU alum, and it's called African it's called African American Perspectives in Science. And I've been working on this textbook for quite some time. I figured that since I had time during COVID to uh, push out that invertebrate uh, uh, textbook, I figured that I would use some additional time because I'm, I'm not going to all these different meetings that I usually go to in, in the in the afternoon. And I figured that I would get this next one published in 2021. And it talks about the many contributions that African-Americans have made in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, as well as invention. And there's a lot of things that uh, um, African-Americans have invented, uh, but the recognition has not been there. And I felt like this is a textbook that I could uh, have not only for my students, but also for those young um, students who are in high school, middle school, who need that extra inspiration in their life 
uh, to move forward and say, well, all these people did these great things. And so I can do these great things as well. So we might have, just like we have uh, Kizzy Corbett, who uh, was instrumental in the formation of the uh, first vaccine for COVID. Uh, we've got many other uh, students who have that potential to come up with a uh, vaccine or even a cure for many other different types of diseases that we don't even know about yet. And so that textbook uh, current, currently is like 450 something pages now. I'm, I'm, I'm being hard on myself in regards to still just adding more and, and just continuously, but I, I need to have some cutoff point where I say, go, go ahead and get this published now and I can add a second volume later. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Well, we do have a question from someone in the audience who's asking, okay. how long did it take you to write your textbook? And did you collaborate with others? And if so, then who? Yeah, well, it, 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 it took a while, uh, unfortunately. And this second one has taken an even longer time. I've heard of some people saying it, it took uh, 10 years to write one textbook and I, I can attest to that. So <laughs> I can attest to that. And then, so a lot of people give me information on uh, things and I just add it to my textbook. So, and uh, you know, that's, that's the way it ha happens. E each one teach one and, and each person help each other, so. That's so important. And um, I know a, a bit about that process. So for those who are listening, I mean, this idea of the book, you know, you don't sit down and write a textbook today. Um, it sort of evolves right. over time. And as you get more information, you have to make revisions to it. Um, and so yeah. you have collaborators, you know, sort of that, you know, directly and then collaborators who you um, know much more indirectly who work with you over time on these projects. Um, so let's pivot just for a moment to talk a little bit about what you teach here at Union. So talk to us about right. your teaching, um, what you teach and what do you like most about teaching at the collegiate level? Okay, well, I think I've taught quite a few different science courses here at good old uh, VUU. Uh, of course, we mentioned African-American perspectives in science. I've I've even taught ecology in the lab. I've taught environmental science also. Of course, uh, freshman biology. I've even taught health. Currently this semester, we have a new course, uh, Health Issues in the African-American Community. Uh, and that started with the new health science major that we uh, launched in uh, this uh, semester, January, 2021. I'm teaching that one online. Of course, you mentioned uh, invertebrate zoology as well. I've taught that. I've, I've taught the biology course for non-majors also. And uh, one course that I particularly like, uh, and I think some of my students are on right now, is microbiology. And um, I, I tell my students I'm a different person when I'm teaching microbiology. And I think they know that because uh, I'm, I'm passionate about that course in particular in, in regards to making sure students are well prepared for the next level and uh, for graduate school as well, because that's one of the courses that, that the uh, students take either in med school or even in allied health school that is an extremely important course, uh, that's microbiology. Uh, some other courses, I've taught molecular biology, I've taught um, at Fisk, I taught this course called Natural Science, which is part of the core curriculum. I've taught research techniques in biology, I've taught senior seminar, and I've also taught writing in the sciences just name a few, and that's all on the undergraduate level. On the graduate level, uh, there's this course called Health Disparities in the African American Community, and that's part of the new Masters uh, in Public Health uh, program that we have here that just launched at VUU uh, this semester as well, and uh, I'm pretty sure there'll be some courses in the new Masters in Biology program that we have uh, being launched uh, this uh, semester as well in 2021 also. So as you can see, I've taught quite a few different courses. My, my passion with teaching is to interact with students and, and I, I see that light bulb, proverbially, uh, light up when students learn a particular concept and you ask them those what I like to ask uh, critical thinking questions or uh, applying your knowledge questions. Those are, the those are the questions that I like to either put on a quiz. It's either one critical thinking question on that quiz and there's one applying your knowledge question on, on that quiz that I ask students. And I, I can see that light bulb uh, go off as I ask those critical thinking questions 
uh, for those students. So it's a, it's a passion, as I mentioned before, it's in the DNA. Uh, my grandmother, my mother and father, both were teachers as well. My sister uh, is a uh, principal of a major high school uh, in Nashville, Tennessee as well. One of three blue ribbon schools in the uh, state of Tennessee. Uh, and she serves as principal of that school as well. That's awesome. And such a, I mean, it's making so so much, bringing all these connections together is helping make so much sense of the work you do and the passion you have for it. Um, certainly, I want to pick up on a couple of things that you've already dropped. First is that we certainly are excited about all of our new graduate programs here at Virginia Union. We yes. have launched a master's in biology, a master of public health, master's in health sciences, master in um, an executive MBA. Uh, we have a several more coming on board and this information is in the chat. So if you are in the viewing audience, listening audience, the live audience on Facebook and you're interested in applying to graduate studies here at Virginia Union, then you certainly wanna to apply today. If you have questions, need information or wanna be contacted or connected with our staff in the uh, Division of Enrollment Management, especially our grad studies area, please send an email to four, the number four, help at vuu.edu. You certainly can reach out to our faculty experts like Dr. McShepard. We're looking forward to having you here at Virginia Union. If you are interested in going to graduate school, you belong here at Virginia Union. So uh, let's continue on, Dr. McShepard. Yes. You shared you, you have a passion for microbiology. Um, yes, that's sir. where you really sort of come alive <laughs> and you want your students to get ready for graduate school. For those of us who are not biologists, imagine that people who aren't biologists. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about the curriculum of microbiology. What do you cover in that course? What is it that brings you alive? And what is it where you've seen students have those aha moments? All right, so uh, currently, you know, when we talk about microbiology, most people think it's only just bacteria, but it's, it, it's not that. It's, it's, uh, it's all types of organisms, uh, when we talk about viruses, we, we talk about uh, wound infections, because it's taught from a health perspective, and you know, different cuts on an individual person and, and, and how different bacteria can, can enter the body or different viruses can enter the body as well. So uh, currently we, we are talking about one of the international assignments that we have in regards to the coronavirus. Um, we had a discussion in regards to the vaccine. Currently, uh, Pfizer and Moderna are the two companies that have been able to generate uh, a vaccine. One of those vaccines has two applications in the, and one of those vaccines only has one application. And it's a different storage way in, in order to uh, store those uh, vaccines as well. So we, we talk about, uh, different types of immunity. We talk about um, age of individuals. We talk about how uh, certain um, people are more susceptible to disease than others, you know, based on age, based on the predisposition of health, um, based, based on if an individual person um, uh, is exposed to a disease and whether or not that person will uh, have that immune system that is able to fight off that disease. So, you know, you have, have a person who has um, cancer or, or any other type of disease that impairs the immune system, then that makes them more susceptible uh, to other types of diseases and they can uh, pass away, un unfortunately. Um, we also talk about, you know, the fact that if a person enters a hospital, uh, that increases their chances of, of, of being infected by a, another type of disease by, by 50%. And um, just a lot of different topics that we cover in that uh, one semester microbiology class. I was joking with uh, Dr. Jackson. I think he was uh, even mentioning this stuff. We can even make this uh, microbiology class a, a, a two semester course uh, based on the amount of information uh, that I'm providing to the students in in one semester, but we want to make sure that they learn as much as they can. We want to make sure as they learn as much as any other student would learn at any other university uh, to make them adequately prepared. I, I tell my students that they are not competing with the people that they see. They are competing with the people that they do not see. Uh, and that's an important component in regards to them being prepared for the next level, because once they leave the nest of VUU, uh, they will be prepared for the next level. 
that's great advice. And so we're glad to know that our faculty are not only um, pushing forward the boundaries of knowledge and their discipline, their content area, but also making a difference in the classroom and encouraging our students to understand that um, we're an institution that has a you know bright and shining vision, a historic mission, but we, as we say, we're trying to prepare them for the promise of a limitless future. And that um, sort of encapsulates that advice you give that you're competing against the um, those who you do not see. So I want to um, ask one question that's come up in the chat and then move to my final question to those who are with us in the Zoom room, but also those who are watching live on Facebook. Um, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A function to raise any questions as we um, sort of near the end of this episode. To you, Dr. McShepard, um, one, the question is, you've talked a lot about your research, your teaching. Um, folks in the chat are saying they know you love DUU, but what else do you love outside of DUU? Oh. <laughs> well, um, I think I, I said in, in, in the brief part of the bio and stuff in, in regards to a lot of different organizations I'm a member of, and, uh, you know, the, the Shriners, the Masons, I mean, you, you, you name it, there are a lot of things that we do within the community uh, in order to uh, assist people. And of course, a member of uh, Alpha Phi Alpha and uh, Fraternity Incorporated, the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows. So, so you, you name it, uh, Astoria Beneficial Club. So there are a lot of organizations that I'm a member of outside of the community, uh, outside of VUU. Uh, in order to help engage the community as, as a complete component uh, from um, having uh, Christmas baskets to Thanksgiving baskets to, to shoe drives to Coke drives to canned food drives. I mean, you, you name it and stuff. Uh, work, working in soup kitchens and, and, and serving food to um, the needy, the underserved, um, you name it. That's, that's a great passion of mine. Lots of drives. I also love... Yes, lots of drives. I also love reading. A lot of people don't know this. Well, I, I guess I've kind of hinted at it a little bit. So I, I do have a vast book collection. Uh, those people who call me on Zoom when I'm at home and stuff, they can see I use that book collection as my as my backdrop. And they say, well, is, is that a screen? I said, no. And I grab a book and show it to them. It says, oh, that's not a screen. So, you know, so i uh, got about 4,000 different um, books in my collection between here and Tennessee. And it's it seems to be growing too. So, I need a bigger place in uh, Richmond. So, and, uh, <laughs> and and you're an avid, voracious reader, um, yes. a committed professional, a scientist, a teacher. Um, so, as we close, and again, I'll check the chat. But what advice do you have for those who might be considering majors, or minors, or degrees in science fields like biology, chemistry, and other? Uh, microbiology or who are aspiring to go to medical school. What advice do you have for those? First, the majors, the students who might be considering those fields. And if you might also offer any advice to those who are thinking about moving into um, being a professor, a faculty member one day in the science, what advice do you have for those, wow. especially those of color? Yes, yes. So um, we, we have a dynamic group of uh, faculty here at Virginia Union, uh, you know, oftentimes when you talk about a field of science, it's one of the most exciting fields that you can go into. I mean, even with this, unfortunately, uh, with this virus going around, with this, this pandemic going on right now, this is the most exciting time to go into a field of science. And, and we have a dynamic group of faculty with Dr. Jackson, Dr. Cobb Abdullah, Dr. Prima Rodney, Dr. Mensa. Dr. Van Ashman, Dr. Madhu, Dr. Esianu, Dr. Calitarians, and if I forgot somebody, I apologize. Um, and we got a dynamic dean in the School of Arts and Sciences and stuff. It should be science and arts, but I won't get in trouble for that one. Uh, with Dr. Uh, Ted Ritter uh, as our dean, who is doing a fantastic job as dean. And so we're, we're looking forward to uh, receiving students even if you want to change your major, it's okay to change your major. You can change from uh, a particular major and, and go into uh, biology, chemistry, physics. You can. You can change your major. Health sciences, which is our new major. It's okay. We know you want to come over and, and change your major to a, uh, a science field. It's okay. Um, and with the dynamic group of faculty that we have and the facilities that we have with the 
new chemistry lab, new biology lab, new physics lab as well. This is a institution that will prepare you for the next level. And we even have graduate programs now. So when I first arrived here at VUU, I always wondered why we did not have a master's degree in biology. And uh, I was one of the ones who actually wrote the original proposal uh, for that master's degree in biology. And now we have it. And uh, we have a master's in public health uh, as well. So we're, we're moving to the next level in regards to this. I always say that uh, Virginia Union is uh, uh, going through an evolutionary process. And uh, we, we also thank the leadership of uh, Dr. Lucas as well in regards to this vision that we are moving forward to become best in class. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that, uh, Dr. Shepard, and to all of you who have joined us for this episode. This concludes this week's episode of the Faculty Spotlight Series here at Virginia Union University. We launched the Faculty Spotlight Series as a way to highlight university faculty and academic personnel in live sessions where they could share their research expertise, their published scholarship, and their teaching um, work in ways that would share, connect our university with the general public and beyond. This morning's episode, we featured Dr. Gerard McShepard, professor of biology, and we look forward to you joining us for many, many other episodes. In the meantime, friends, wash your hands, wear your mask, wear, uh, stay six feet apart, but take good care of yourself. Uh, and we're closing this session live from Richmond, Virginia at Virginia Union University on our historic campus. Take care, goodbye.